you did. It looks great. Um, I'd like to welcome all the Zoom participants and Dr. Lester. No place like home. Let's sing about it. That's right. speaker today, uh, that you would open our uh, minds and hearts today to what she has to say for this very, very important message. And Lord, just um, go with us this week. Help us to be better citizens and to be better contributors to our community. And we just lift up uh, your name, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Mr. Duffy, family of Rotary. <laughs> President, I'm going to have to agree with Dr. Dr. Lester. It's great to be back home, and uh, also a special thanks to all the folks at First Methodist. Man, they hosted us well. That was a great, great facility, and uh, that was very enjoyable. Anyway, birthdays short in number, but uh, some important. Melissa Kirkwood. I look around. Is Melissa here today? I don't think so. She must be out celebrating. It's February 27th. Todd Derrick on March the 1st and uh, Daniel Purvis on March 2nd. One big anniversary, both Andrew and Martha on uh, March the 2nd. Hope you all have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Judo will introduce our guests in visiting room areas. <laughs> Seventy-five and beautiful out there. Isn't it nice to be in Nothing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Only the beach would be there. So, all right. Um, happy to welcome welcome our guest today. As I call your name, if you would, if you please rise and uh, stay standing until I get finished. And um, first, we have Miss Linda Hendricks, guest of the mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So we Elkins, Selena Lopez, all guests of Dr. Young, Amy Dixon, guest of the club, and Alatron, guest of Bruce Morgan. Did I miss anybody? Any visiting group All right. Y'all have a great day. Thank you all for coming. And that's the drawing. Just the session. All right. I'm going to make sure you get about $82 today. So we got 291 points. All right. All right. Last four digits, eight one five one. Two 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 two. Look at that. 
new channels for the flow of international understanding and broader hopes for peace. In becoming a Paul Harris fellow, Captain, you join a remarkable company of persons throughout the world, all recognized for their devotion of the ideal of goodwill, peace, and understanding. A goal will carry us the world over. Catherine, it gives me great pleasure to present you with this emblem of appreciation, Paul Harris Fellows Certificate, and your pen. We congratulate you and thank you for your commitment to the programs of the Rotary Foundation. Let's all give her that. <laughs> This is kind of weird when you're the one up there. <laughs> Alan Richards has an announcement or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, President Greg. I'd like everyone to welcome the representatives of the Wallace Rotor Act Club sitting here at the front table. Ms. Sylvia Elkins, who is the Wallace Rotor Act President, she's also the Wallace STA President, will now give us a quick up. Take a few moments to update us on what's going on at Wallace Collins. There's no right there. Y'all, thank you very much for having me. We just wanted to give you an update of the Wallace Road Rack Group that we've been up to. This is Selena Lopez, she's our vice president, and then Sylvie Elkins, is the president. And we have participated in a lot of events already this year. We what have we done? The, the walk out of darkness um, for suicide prevention, mental illness. We've helped with um, the love your neighborhood. We've done that three times now. That's a really, really funny event. We did that last, we did it on Saturday actually. We've got 10 students from Wallace. We trimmed some hedges. Uh, they look pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, did, uh, we did okay. No, they look pretty good. But we did that. We had a faculty softball game where we raised money for an Amtrak bike. And we're going to be here tomorrow to help some of those. <laughs> The faculty and staff, the faculty and staff team, we played against the Lady Gubs, the, soft, the college softball team of Wallace. Uh, we, we got beat. Um, yeah, the, the shortstop started playing left handed, just to give you a sense of how good they were compared to us. We've done that, and oh, yeah, the Humane Society, we've done that twice. Uh, thank you, Mr. Richards, by the way, for your support. Mr. McNeil, thank you too, sir. Um, what else did we do? The Amtrak are doing that. Uh, we're doing the Miracle League, where we're going to help with the, the kids over at Westgate Park. And we did. We planted trees in Wallace. That's right. We planted 10 trees in Wallace Community College. We raised money through faculty, staff, and students. We planted those in November. They're looking really good. And they're, they're small trees. They're about, they're about two years old. They're two of poplars and oak trees. So they should be there for a really long time as a, you know, as, as a contribution from Road Rack. And it wouldn't be possible without you guys here at Rotary. So thank you very much for your support. And we just want to give you an update of what we've been doing. And we are really enjoying it. So thank you very much. Amen. You guys are doing a great job. You really are. Yeah. New member of induction is Chris Dixon would come forward with his wife Amy. Chris Dixon was born into a military family in Ozark, Alabama, and spent time in different locations, Tennessee, Texas, Maryland, and Germany. Is that a state? Yeah. He earned his bachelor's degree from Troy University, graduating summa cum laude 
and a master's degree from Western Governors University. Chris spent, has spent the last 13 years at Southeast Health, where he's held many different positions in the biomedical and IT departments. Chris is married to Amy, and they have a daughter currently attending the University of Alabama, Roll Valley. In his free time, he enjoys teaching, running, walking, and playing with his three dogs, Sophie, Charlie, and Remus. <laughs> if y'all would, welcome Chris Dixon. Still trying to figure all this out. Chris, you've been chosen the membership to the Built-in Rotary Club because your fellow members believe in you to be a leader in your vocation and because you manifest those qualities of head and heart, which fits you to interpret and impart the message of Rotary to those with whom you come in contact. You are the representative of your vocation. And any contribution of an educational value pertaining to that vocation must naturally come through you. On the other hand, you become the ambassador from us to your vocation, and it becomes your duty to carry the ideals and principles of service to your work. We also expect much of you in help and inspiration, which will enable us to be better Rotarians. And with this hope, we most heartily offer you Rotary, Rotary Fellowship. I wish to impress upon you that you've been admitted not only to the Belton Rotary Club, but to the Worldwide Association in over 160 countries, 32,000 clubs, and 1.2 million members. By virtue of your membership in this club, you are welcome into the fellowship of Rotary anywhere in the world. The honor and privilege of Rotary membership carries with it duties and obligations. You will be expected to attend the club business. To perform your share of club service and to place your knowledge and talents at the disposal of the club in its task of carrying the principles of Rotary into the daily life of the community. The community will know and judge Rotary through your embodiment of it, in character and service. We accept you as a member because we believe our principles and organizations to be safe in your keeping. I ask all members to rise. <laughs> It's now my distinct pleasure in the name of the Delta Rotary Club to formally admit you to membership and to ask your sp sponsor, or if David would, affix your lapel pen and the ro Rotary four way tag. Let's welcome Chris. John Gorm, please, please come forward. Anyone who's been in this club for several years knows John Gormley and finally thinks of him. He has served our club in the past as a member, an officer, most every position, including a term as president. He served on numerous city boards, including the original board of directors of Harvard Church. He served the legal community for several decades and for the past 20 years has produced and presented continuing education seminars which are accredited in 29 states throughout this, this country. John is married to Charlotte, who retired from the Dothan Police Department as a patrol sergeant. <coughs> they worship at Rich Crest Baptist Church, where Charlotte is a longtime member. They have two grown children. Let's welcome him back. I'm 
excited about all new members. Um, John's going to be doing something for us that's uh, called Three Facts <laughs> and a Myth starting next week, isn't it, John? And I think we'll find that entertaining. Joseph Johnson, can you come forward and give us an update? Thanks, on the rotary ball. No, you're good. That's me. I prefer to launch, John. Yeah. Y'all should have seen the look I just got. My bad. Uh, quick update on the rotary ball. You watched. We've got some communication from Mary Beth Meadows. She's kind of our liaison with the Tuesday Club to put the spin off. Um, it is April 22nd at Bella's Fine Dining. Uh, it will benefit the um, Dothan the Miracle League. Um, it's going to be a great event, a lot of fun. If you have any questions or are interested in buying tickets, you can reach out to me. I think there's a few people in the room that may be helping out selling tickets. Raise your hand if you are. There we go. Any of us, you can reach out to us or Mary Beth. Thank you all. Thank you, Lauren. I rarely get through a meeting without calling someone by the wrong name, so we're right on target. Josh, did you have? Yes. Josh Chapman. As Mr. Judah alluded to earlier, it's warming up outside, so spring just around the corner, which means John Jam is coming up. So we are less than two weeks away from uh, this year's John Jam uh, Music Festival. As most of you know, uh, the proceeds from this event go directly to WRC, directly to uh, Ambux of the Wiregrass, and also the real project. Um, so we uh, we hope to see a lot of you out there. Your flyers on your uh, on your tables. Uh, the the um, date of the event is March 11th. So if you have a business or a group that would like to participate in the chili cook-off, or if you would like to be a sponsor for the event, we would certainly love that. Uh, please let me know. Um, also, uh, Miss Cynthia said uh, to let everybody know that we will be putting together. Amtrak bikes in this room tomorrow afternoon between three and seven. So we're in need of some helping hands. Hope to see y'all there. Thanks. Thank you, John. I'm going to introduce our speaker. Um, back at the uh, in January at the mid year conference up in Montgomery, our speaker, Chris Zabak of the Camille House, spoke and uh, I couldn't talk afterwards for some time. Um, the topic just tears at the heart. And uh, I said, we need you to come to Dover. Uh, Chris has a natural love for children and a desire to see them flourish. He's graduated with a degree in early childhood development <clears throat> education from Auburn and was a third generation educator. For years, she served the community with volunteer service on board United Way, Committee for Small Towns and Downtown, uh, Monroe County Hospital Cancer Treatment Center, Monroe County Health Foundation, <coughs> served on the Pastor Paris Staff Relations Committee for the First United Methodist Church, and, and on and on and on. Um, for young girls in Monroe County, she's led a Bible study for five years. She's written several programs to be presented on national and state levels to prevent human trafficking and provide services for aftercare. One initiative was recently adopted by the State Board of Education and the Alabama Independent School Association to reach students in each school in the state. She serves on the Attorney General's Human Trafficking Alliance and the Governor's Task Force for Service Providers. In 2022, she was voted as Monroe, Monroeville Kiwanian Citizen of the Year and has been a guest speaker at the Rotary Mid-Year Conference and on the Christian Television Network. Come tell us about this. Thank y'all for having me. Can you see me? I wore my heels. <laughs> so can y'all see me on the back? Oh, I'm not sure. um, so, and I'm also animated. So I will kind of go back and forth and use my hand. If I have my hands behind my back, I don't know that um, I could talk. So just forgive me in advance. 
Um, I wasn't going to start off like I did at the Rotary Conference, but um, I'm going to shift and I am going to do the same. Um, normally, when I speak, it's always different. Um, the night before I spoke in Montgomery to, uh, at the Rotary Convention, um, as I was laying down, the Lord just gave me a whole new script, and it was um, quite different when I had to really concentrate on that next day, because I mostly speak to women, so when I speak to mixed groups, it um, sometimes can be difficult because of the topic. But um, we'll start off with this, and y'all have eaten, so I'm going to kind of get your blood flowing a little bit. If you have a mother or ever have had a mother, a wife, or a daughter, would you stand up? <laughs> okay, the teacher in me is going to come out, so you have to listen here. If you've ever had mother, wife, and daughter, a daughter remain standing. Or more than one daughter. So mom, wife, daughter. Okay, you may be seated. If you are a female, you may stand. All females. Statistics state, state that one in four females has been sexually assaulted. So look around the room at all of us females. One and four. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, for all of us, go to that female, whether it's your mother, whether it's your wife, or whether it's your child, and just put their picture in your mind. Imagine that loved one being chained to a bed and raped repeatedly. A man putting their knees on the back of her neck to insert drugs into her neck, only fed when she's allowed to be fed not allowed to come out, her shoes taken from her, her glasses or contacts taken from her, and her dignity and innocence stolen. And that person who did that to her benefits from using her. That is human trafficking. That is taking place all across our state. I first started, um, first introduced to this back um, years ago, I had gone through a divorce and really angry at God, didn't, um, didn't understand why my marriage didn't survive after I was on my knees, I know they're not begging. Remarried, have two daughters of my own. They were young. This was eight years ago. And we were at the beach, and they were bouncing, hot tub pool, hot tub pool. I was reading a book called Kisses from Katie, still not really relational with the Lord. I grew up Methodist, christened and confirmed. We were at church every Sunday, um, read my Bible at night, prayed. I was a believer, but after that divorce, I was rock solid bottom. And, um, but remarried, <coughs> kids happy. And all of a sudden, I'm reading that book, and it's like, whew, the power of God just came over me. I can't explain it. Um, but I called my mom and I was crying and I said, Mom, I don't know what is about to happen to me, but I'm scared. Like I was legit scared that I knew that my life was about to turn upside down. Well, at that point, I began to sit at the feet of Jesus every day. There were days that I would still be in pajamas and have to change to go get the girls to school. Praying, worshiping, breathing, couldn't get enough. And then I began to have good dreams at night, like vacation, fun. And I started documenting them because they were uh, almost nightly. And then fast forward two years after that, on a Thursday night, I had a dream that my daughter was kidnapped and trafficked. Two nights later, I woke my husband up screaming because in the dream, I was being drugged into the woods by a man and a woman. Those dreams continued. Following, a few days following that, um, a lady came into a gift shop. She was from Texas. And, you know, we're from the South. We talked to everybody. We're cordial and fly. And um, we began talking. And um, she said, I hear the Lord saying you're going to open a home for girls rescued from human trafficking. 
I thought, honey, you cute, but that's crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I, um, I don't even know where the DHR office is. I know nothing about this. I just knew that what I had experienced in my dreams was very real. But I really was thinking China, Atlanta, um, not here in Alabama for sure. <clears throat> And so I really didn't pray into what this lady had told me because I thought she was nuts. And the dreams continued. And a friend of mine said, you need to come to Montgomery to hear um, first human trafficking summit ever. You need to come and hear what's taking place. And I was like, what? Like, not, not here. Well, I went. And I sat there. And remember, he said, education. I have two daughters. And I'm sitting there and I'm hearing that there were only two facilities in our state for women who have been rescued from human trafficking. <clears throat> that the younger she is, the more money that is made off of her. If they have blue eyes, the more money is made off of them. That the youngest one that had been abused was two months old. That the perpetrators carry these children on a circuit from city to city, selling them all along the way. That there was nothing in our state for minors. And I left there, y'all. I just didn't, I mean, I really couldn't sleep. And my stomach, I was sick. I thought somebody has to do something. And again, it was not Chris. <laughs> I was not the girl with the job. So I began to call people. I was ready to fundraise. I will rake. I will clean the bathrooms, whatever I need to do to help. And the door just kept being shut with these two facilities. Again, the dreams continued. In all the dreams, I was the victim, where I was presented to strung out men, where I was throwing things out of the vehicle, trying to take off my head, where I was shipped in a shipping container. And finally, one day, I just got on my knees and I said, God, I will do this, but I need you. I need you every step of the way. So, how do you raise money? for um, a facility for girls that have been trafficked when people turn their head and don't want to hear it because it's too dark and too grotesque to even think about, when the government doesn't support um, facilities for construction, there's nothing statewide or federal. Once you open, there is, you have to get to that point. Um, just for sprinkler systems and to meet fire code, we're talking around 30,000. Um, but I began. I was like, okay, Lord, I said, we're doing it. Let's go. And he began to show me and lead people to me. Um, we were talking earlier about where I go to speak, and I just, I don't reach out to people. I just wait till they make a phone call or reach out to us, and, and then I just pray about, you know, the Lord send them. And that is exactly what he has done. So Camille Place is about a 10,000 square foot facility. We can house up to 20 if we need to. We're going to keep it between 10 and 16. Um, 19 down to age 6. Younger than 6 would have to have DHR approval. And if we were open right now, we would be at capacity. This one home is not enough. We are exclusively for minors on our campus. We are faith-based, short and long-term care, and rare. Across the United States, there are 14 homes similar to ours, and nothing in the Southeast exclusively like the program that we have. So um, it's been a task. It's been daunting. I've quit probably 20 times <laughs> and gotten up the next day and gone right back in um, to fight this fight. Just last month, we got a call from another small town. Um, three young girls. So this situation was their parents selling them, opening their bedroom door, and letting men after men come in to abuse that child for drugs or for cash. So what we used to see back seven years ago was more of a, uh, a perpetrator doing this, an outsider, and now what they're seeing is an increase of family and it kind of goes in the line of if you um, have inflation, that increases poverty. Poverty and this go hand in hand. If you have a drug problem, you have a trafficking problem, 
because it also goes hand in hand. If you were in a location like Dothan where you have multiple roads that lead out of town, you're on a circuit where they are being taken. My daughter just graduated from Troy and the things that I heard that took place there and good bypassers going towards the beach um, would make your skin crawl. And um, so it's not just a Atlanta problem. It's not just a Birmingham or a 20, which is a um, super highway across the country. It's literally in everyone's backyards. And it's an issue that we all need to look at and, and, and try to help. We all need to be a factor in where we step up and say, here's a need, let's meet it. If you think it can't be your daughter, when I described to you earlier about the knees in the back and being locked in a room, that young girl played sports with my daughter. We were at her house for birthday parties and we went with her to church. She went off to college and a boyfriend began to drug her and take her, sell her, and her parents, her dad, an FBI agent, did not even know where she was. She's back home safely and has gotten care and is, is doing extremely well. But what we find is if girls are rescued, we all celebrate that. But then on the flip side, where are we taking them? If they don't have a home to go back to, they are held in detention centers, in DHR offices, in a hotel with a social worker, because there is nowhere for placement. And if they don't get the therapeutic care that they need, then they're back, that they, they keep that cycle going. So we are the light. We are a place where they can come and not only live in a place without fear, but a place that um, they can learn to know who their savior is and a place where they can get an education, a roof over their head, food to eat, where they can go to the restroom when they have to because now, um, in situations that they're in, they're told when they can and when they can't. Um, so we are um, expected to open in a month. We're praying. <laughs> we uh, it's been a long ride to build this facility, but literally, y'all, it has been people from all over this country that have come in to give their services <coughs> or to donate materials for this home to get built. Um, you can find us on social media. Um, we have brochures at the front. I do have a card as well. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous home. Our decorators um, are in Montgomery, and they are professional decorators and donating all of the furniture um, for, for the home, except for the bedrooms. So we are super excited and ready to open our doors. And like I said, when we're open, we're going to start with around two girls. Um, we do have um, experts in the field, um, staff, which has also been a blessing. Our social service director was the state director of Alabama Department of Public Health. And then our executive director has been working with minors and young girls in other facilities um, since she graduated college. And um, so we are very, very blessed and very thankful. But I will say this, it will take all of us. Once we're open, we have to apply for grants, have to have a grant writer. Um, God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. But he also gives it to us to spread the love. He gives us hands to go be the hands and the feet. Um, so we uh, just, I implore all of you, when you leave here, make phone calls. Get your phones out. Text people from Mill Place. Urge them to have awareness. Um, or to support and to pray. The phones that we have, hold your phone up. So the teacher and me, I am such a visual. This right here, we got a call last summer. A nine-year-old girl had been on her device. Mom woke up in the middle of the night, happened to walk past the child's room, and the child hid the device, and the mom got it. But at that point, it was too late. An organized group on the other end had met her through a gaming app and had been getting to know her, then started threatening her to send different videos and photographs. And by the time the mother reached out to us and we got the task force involved, the pictures had already been sent out. 
and that child had already been exploited. So our children, our grandchildren can be exploited in our very homes. We have to keep up with the times with what's going on with the devices and, and have the parental controls to keep that from ever happening in the first place. But anyway, I thank you for the invitation. Um, and I thank all of y'all for being patient with me um, and hearing this is a hard topic and I'm normally like fun and like to be loud and exciting. So when I look out and I see the sad faces, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm on every, you know, uh, but the exciting part is that there is hope for young girls and that is what Camille Place will be bringing. So again, thank you and y'all have a good day. Thank you, Bruce. Our program next week, Katie Brett. Uh, Dan McCain is presenting the program and um, look forward to that. And oh, I'd like to say Chris Dad is right here. So we're glad to have glad to have you here. So huh. glad, from all the things that you've done. I've heard you speaking stuff several times and each time is great. So thank you for continuing. Let's all stand and uh, recite the four way test. Of the things we think, say or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will they do a good will and a better appreciation? Will they be beneficial to all concerned? Thank <laughs> you.